I want to welcome everyone and thank you for attending our third Regents meeting via Zoom. Mary, please proceed with your comment. Hi, my name is Mary Salazar, and I'm here on behalf of the Society for Ethical Research to speak about the failure of UCSF's Institutional Review Board. UCSF's Institutional Review Board has been failing to uphold ethical standards at UCSF for decades now, which greatly concerns myself and the Society, particularly the allowance of UCSF to perform later-term abortions on viable, pain-capable fetuses without digoxin, either through a live dismemberment or medical induction, which according to the Society of Family Planning can result in born alive infants up to 50% of the time. At UCSF, they then procure these organs for unethical research. California Health and Safety Code 123435 says that babies who are born alive from abortion should have the same rights as any baby who is prematurely born spontaneously. As far as the public knows, there are no safeguards in place for verifying signs of life at UCSF. I and the society am asking for transparency on this matter. What protocols are being upheld for verifying signs of life as these babies who are born alive? We ask for transparency, safeguards, and humane standards from the UCSF Institutional Review Board. Ethical research now. Thank you for your time. Herb, please proceed with your comment. Good morning. My name is Herb Garrity, and I would like to comment on transparency and ethics in UCSF Research Lab. It's my understanding that for several different projects, researchers are using organs harvesting, harvested from abortion victims. In order for these organs to be used in research, the abortion provider cannot use the joxin to induce fetal demise before dismemberment and dissection. Since we're talking about late-term, post-viability children that can survive outside the womb if given medical care, I would like to know what policies are in place to prevent live dissection, dissection of these human subjects. I would also appreciate information to be made publicly available about exactly how many of these children are being born alive and dissected. Particularly, I am looking to you, Chancellor Hallgood, to demand that your labs are keeping with California Health and Safety Code 123435 that mandates that infants born alive during an attempted abortion are given medical care. Health care is a human right. These children deserve health care, too. Thank you. Ryan, please proceed with your comment. Hello, my name's Ryan Uchison. Um, I'm here to speak about the unethical scientific experimentation happening at UCSF. I'm specifically talking to Sam Hoggood there, the chancellor of UCSF. As others have stated, UCSF is one of the leading clinics involved in harvesting of human fetal tissue. It has been recorded as wanting human fetal tissue from elective healthy abortions between 18 and 24 weeks. UCSF does not use digoxin, because digoxin would contaminate organs used for fetal tissue research. Digoxin is something which usually causes the fetus to have a heart attack, so that way it doesn't feel the pain before you tear it apart. In addition to this, there's one of two procedures. Either the baby is going to be torn apart limb from limb in the womb, or the mother is going to be forced into labor. In the second case, there's a 50% chance of the fetus being born alive. You guys have not given us transparency. We've kept asking for transparency, and I'm calling on you guys to give us transparency. I'm also calling on you guys to please find ethical alternatives for scientific research, including miscarried fetuses, organ donors, adult cell research, and artificial organs. I'm very concerned about what's been going on, and I'm asking all of you guys to please consider other options and to please give us the transparency that we've been demanding. Robert Bird, please proceed with your comment. Hello, Regents. Hello, Board Chair Perez, and also I'd like to um, say hello to the President, the outgoing President, Janet Napolitano. My name is Robert Bird. I'm the Executive Coordinator of Pro-Life San Francisco, and at five previous sessions of the Regents' meeting, we have been urging transparency concerning the organ harvesting taking place at the University of California, San Francisco. This is all public information, National Institutes of Health-funded experiments, that create an ongoing dependency for organs harvested from late-term or viable human fetuses. There is no justification for killing unborn babies old enough to survive outside the womb. We're talking about 24 weeks old, and we cannot stop urging you, all of you, all of you regents, to shine a light on UCSS when it comes to the fate of their abortion survivors. They engage in abortion procedures called labor inductions, which, according to the Society of Family Planning, result in born-alive infants up to half of the time. 
Are there adequate policies and protocols in place when it comes to verifying signs of life? And when it comes to ensuring the delivery of medical care, is there any meaningful oversight for this? I would like to ask you, why has UCSF refused to disclose public records to us that Pro-Life San Francisco sent last year in July? Time. California Public Record Act requests 019-090. Teresa, please proceed with your comment. It's me again, Teresa Bakovinak, founder and executive director of Pro-Life San Francisco. I'm a Democrat, an atheist, an LGBTQIA ally, and longtime San Francisco resident. This is our sixth time addressing you all, Regents, regarding the horrific practice of live human dismemberment on viable, healthy members of our community for horrific, unethical scientific experimentation. The reliance on a monthly supply of late-term fetuses creates a dependency on their organs, and up to half of these fetuses are born alive and could survive on their own if provided medical care. These acts by UCSF represent the worst and most egregious examples of abortion extremism in the world today. Even the Nazis sometimes euthanize their victims. We are not going away, and we will continue to demand answers, and we will keep coming back and bringing more and more people to this cause. We are asking for transparency, safeguards, ethical standards, and for the university to comply with our FOIA request from over a year ago. We stand in solidarity with the victims today. Thank you.